Well, hello and welcome back to another week of working with fractions and mixed numbers. This week we are adding and subtracting and we are primarily working with um, unlike fractions. So fractions that have different denominators or bottom numbers. And this year with sixth grade, we are also introducing mixed numbers into those calculations as well as whole numbers. So let's review the rules and steps for adding and subtracting unlike fractions. Okay, if you have a mixed number, it is best to change it over to an improper fraction with using the C method. You can, especially with addition, just line up your mixed numbers vertically, add the whole numbers, and then make sure that you have like fractions and add your like fractions. Um, with subtraction, you can also do it, but sometimes it gets a little bit complicated with borrowing. So sometimes we just recommend for subtraction, you go ahead and set up an improper fraction. All right, if you're working with a whole number, remember to make it look like a fraction by putting it over one. So then you can create like fractions and add or subtract. And then to make like fractions, you have to make those equivalent fractions by finding a number that they can have in common as a denominator, or the hack is to just multiply the first denominator by the second denominator, and then for the second denominator, multiply it by the first denominator. And then add or subtract your actual fractions now that they are like fractions. And the final thing is to simplify. Now, if you have an improper fraction, make sure that you do convert it back to a mixed number because that is best for. All right, let's start with the examples of just adding and subtracting unlike fractions, no mixed numbers or whole numbers. Okay, so if we look at this first one, we can tell that they are unlike fractions because they have different bottom numbers or different denominators. So we need to make them have the same denominator. Well, in this situation, we only need to change one of our fractions. So if we look at 3 eighths, we can actually leave that alone because we just need to blow up the 1 fourth to make it into eighths. And then we only have to change one fraction instead of changing both. So. Let's change 1 fourth into something over 8. All right, so how do we go from 4 to 8? 4 times what gives me 8? 2. What we do to the bottom, we must do to the top so that we're not blowing up the bottom and not keeping it proportional or equivalent by blowing up the top as well. Okay, so 1 times 2 is 2. And now we can see that 1 fourth is the same thing as 2 eighths. And so now we can work with this addition problem because we have common denominators now. All right, so remember when we're adding and subtracting, you just add or subtract the top numbers and you rewrite the bottom number or the denominator. Okay, so we have 2 eighths and we're adding 3 eighths, so how many eighths do we now have? We have 5 eighths. Remember that the denominator is talking about the size of the piece that is being cut out of the whole. Okay, so if you think about pizza or you think about um, a pie, the eighth at the bottom is the size slice. So we're cutting a pizza that can feed eight of my friends, all right? So that would be four. We are feeding four friends. These are fourths. And then if we were to cut them again, whoop, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight slices here. So each of these pieces, if I had drawn them, actually cutting them equally, <laughs> would be representing an eighth. So if we had two of those eighths and we added three eighths, we see that we have a total of one, two, three, four, five eighths now shaded in. So that's why we don't add them at the bottom. If we had added that at the bottom, we would have gotten five sixteenths. And think about what the size of a sixteenth would be. That means we would need to go through here and cut each of these in half again and look at how small that makes all of these slices. 
I feel like I have missed one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. No, we got them all. All right, so look at how small those slices are now. If I were to shade 5 sixteenths here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that definitely does not cover the same amount of pizza that 5 eighths covered. You see them all colored in there? So cutting these slices into smaller slices would mean that we are making our denominators bigger because we have to feed more people. So our small, our slices get smaller. Okay. So that's just a quick reminder that you do not add or subtract the bottoms. You just add or subtract the top numbers, the numerators. All right. So because this is not right, I'm going to take that away. All right. We're going to go ahead and get rid of this. And we know that our final answer is 5 eighths for this problem here. And we can't simplify, so we are done. All right, let's repeat that process over here. We don't have any mixed numbers to convert. We don't have any whole numbers to make a fraction. So we're just going to go ahead and make equivalent fractions now. So for this, 3 cannot be multiplied to anything to get 5. So we are going to have to change both of them this time. And the only number that they will have in common is if you actually multiply them to each other. So we need to change two thirds and one fifth. And I'm going to go ahead and just do the trick where I multiply each factor to get or each denominator together as a factor. All right, so what we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. So we multiplied this one by five. So the numerator needs to be multiplied by five. And we multiply this denominator by three. So now we multiply the numerator by three. And what do we get as our new equivalent fractions for both of those? 15 becomes our denominator. And 10 is our numerator for the first one. And then 15 is our denominator again, which is good. That's the goal. We were trying to get like fractions. And 3 is our numerator. So now we have 10 fifteenths. We're subtracting minus our 3 fifteenths. And again, do not add or subtract the denominator. So go ahead and fill it in so you're not tempted to do that. If you had subtracted this, we'd be down to 0. Not going to have 0 in your denominator. So 10 minus 3 is 7. And 7 fifteenths cannot be reduced. There's nothing that is divisible by both of those. So we are done. 2 thirds minus 1 fifth is 7 fifteenths. All right. Let's look at adding and subtracting fractions with mixed numbers or whole numbers. Okay, so we have a whole number in this first one, but remember any number can be made a fraction by putting it over one without changing its value. And if you wanna check that, six divided by one, how many times will six students get on one bus? Well, six of them can get on one bus, so it would be six, the same value there. All right, so six divided by one or six over one. Now we have fractions to work with, but they are not like fractions. So we need to blow this one up. This one won't need to change. So we're gonna go ahead and change six over one into something over seven. All right, so one times what equals seven? Well, obviously seven. What we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. So then we're gonna do six times seven is 42 and we have 42 sevenths now for this first fraction and we can now subtract our four sevenths from the problem okay i'm going to go ahead and write our sevenths in 42 minus 4 is 38 and now we can stop but can we we have an improper fraction don't leave it improper so let's go ahead and change our improper fraction to a mixed number, 38 divided by seven, 38 divided by seven. And seven can go into 38 five times. Five times seven is 35. 
subtract to find the remainder. The remainder is 3. That becomes our numerator for our fraction, and our denominator is still in sevenths. So our final answer is 5 and 3 sevenths. Okay, now we have a mixed number, and we're adding a fraction. So let's convert. I'm going to show both ways of converting and then also just making equivalent fractions and adding. Okay, so if we convert, we get 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. Put it back over the denominator 3. And then we're going to add 1 fourth. Okay, these are not like fractions. And we're going to have to change both of them. But the number that they will have in common is 12 which is actually multiplying them by the other denominator. What we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. And we can go across here. 7 times 4, 28 over 12, plus 3 over 12. And we would get 31 over 12 which is improper, so we're going to make it proper by dividing. And go 2 times and get 24, and then we have a remainder of 7, which becomes our numerator over the 12, and that cannot be reduced, so 2 and 7 twelfths is our answer for this one. All right, and I also wanted to show you that sometimes lining these up vertically can be more helpful. Um, let me show you what I mean by that. So if you come up here and after converting, you get 7 thirds, and you're adding 1 third, well, excuse me, 1 fourth. Sometimes it's easier to have them vertical because then you can do your equivalent fractions off to the side without kind of having to squish them in. But it's just preference. This one times three. And then you would add your numerators and put it back over 12. And then finish out with your converting back to a mixed number. Okay, so whichever way you prefer. All right, I want to show you one last thing. If you wanted to do this... Um, because it is addition, you could have left it, let's say, I'll go over here. You could have left your whole number and line up vertically again with this one. All right, so we have two plus no whole numbers for this one. And that would give us two whole numbers. 2 plus 0. And then right here, it looks like this, okay, without the 7 thirds. So if we wanted to make 1 thirds and 1 fourth like fractions, we already know that we got to go to 12. And then we would have our 4 plus 3 is 7. Let me make my number bigger here. 4 plus 3 is 7 twelfths because 4 twelfths plus 3 twelfths is 7 twelfths. Okay so again with addition it's not scary to line them up vertically and you may prefer to do that than doing the C method but I highly recommend if it's subtraction that you're either very careful with borrowing or go ahead and just change it with the C method. All right I hope that those um, review and the helpful hints were helpful to you and now it is time for you to practice some of these problems on your own.